So Kevin Durant also missed the game against the Houston Rockets earlier this week on Wednesday, and Bookie was the one who stepped up with 27 points, 7 assists, 8 rebounds, arguably his best game in a Warriors uniform. Are you expecting an encore performance from him tonight? Uh, tonight, the last couple weeks of the season, playoffs, I'm expecting Boogie to explode. And here's why, Tough Juice. I've been fortunate enough, and Steve, I always say I thank you on air because since we've been doing players only Tough Juice early in October, well, late October, early November, I've been watching him work out, watching him go one-on-one -on -one four court, understanding he was going down playing with the G League, never complaining, just waiting for that leg to get 100%. I did that Warriors game against the Wizards. I talked to him personally, Tough Juice. I said, when did you realize your leg was back. He said, I'm coming down the steps with my son to pick him up, and I was no longer hesitating. And that's when you hear those uh, stories of he was ramping up the workouts. He was ready to go. Then they said, wait one more month to make sure. And he didn't complain. He waited one more month. So now he's 100%. All-star break has come. And now Steve Kerr said, no more minute restriction. Go play your game. And guess what, cuz? We're going to give Kevin Durant some rest so we can play through you. What do you mean by that? Well, we're going to put you in the mid post like we do with Draymond. And instead of looking to pass every time, go do you. And he's like, wait a minute, what do you mean go do you? No, go be you. And by being you, he had seven assists in the first quarter with 21 points. And he's like, oh, my goodness, I'm not used to having all this talent around me that everyone's watching Steph Curry cut. They're watching Klay Thompson cut. I'm one of the best passing big men in the game today, and I'm still a young guy. I understand now the more unselfish I am, the ball's coming right back to me because my teammates are so unselfish. So I'm going to answer your question again, Chris. I'm looking for Boogie to explode for these last couple weeks of the season and into the playoffs. And against Steven Adams, Karan. Yeah, I, I think this is a great test for him. And look, you're not fully healthy until your body in your mind Connect. are both connected and you're healthy together. You know, sometimes you can be mentally healthy, but physically it's just not there. So when you're able to react in the way that's warranted to be a professional athlete, to the measure of what DeMarcus Cousins was prior to taking that injury and that hit, and now you're welcoming the challenge and saying, you know what, I want the same coverages as everybody else in pick and roll situations. I need to know what I'm going to do you know, going forward down the stretch in order to be effective with this ball club because Bogut is coming, expectedly, expected to be on this roster and expected to be with this squad. And I think DeMarcus Cousins is going to be a huge, huge anchor for them on the offensive end and the defensive end coming down the stretch. And a matchup we have to talk about secondary because of all the talent on the court, but they are primary players in Steph Curry and Russell Westbrook. You have former MVPs, Mr. Triple-Double versus Mr. Three-Point Range. How excited are you for this matchup? I'm super excited, but if we're keeping 100, Clay Thompson's guarding Russell Westbrook most of the time. That's the only, the only part, but I know Steph – the last couple of years, Tough Jude has taken on the challenge saying, no, nah, Clay, you go over there and fool Paul George now. I want to guard Russell. That's what makes this thing juicy now. Because if you put Steph Curry now over there, you, he's not going to guard Paul George by himself right now. You see what I mean? So that's yeah. what makes this matchup so juicy now. Both guys have to play deep. Yeah, I think, it, I think it's super important for both of those guys to play extremely well when you talk about the Splash Brothers and Curry and – you know, Clay, but the thing that's going to be extremely funny is that you don't have KD out there. You know, and he's the guy that usually offset everything. So now you have to actually win your matchup. And Russell Westbrook is going to attack Steph Curry early and often. He's going to try to post him up, get him mm -hmm. in foul trouble. And if you have Clay on him, you know, he's going to try to, you know, beat him on the pick and rolls and try to lay as much wood as possible on him. What do you mean by that? He's going to get hit with a ton of picks, a ton of screens, try to wear him down on the defensive end of the floor, and hopefully that affects him on the offensive end of the floor. I like how you use a euphemism there. You said offset everything, as in the cheat code is really what Kevin Durant is for this Golden State Warriors team. Facts. You thought I was talking about the Amigos? <laughs> 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 well, getting back to the topic at hand, looking at OKC and where they are this season and Paul George being in the MVP conversation, Russell Westbrook still averaging a triple-double. How do you like them, not just in this game, but as a real threat in the postseason against the Warriors? They're going to be a huge threat to pretty much anyone because – you have two dynamic guys on that roster that could take over a series. Russell Westbrook can win you a series. 
when he's clicking on all cylinders. His shot is starting to fall. He's starting to get his legs up un underneath him. Paul George is having the best season of his career. He can go out there and win you a series on both ends of the floor. So when you have the other guys, the, the, the others, stepping up in a major way, you know, Grant, Adams, all those guys knocking down shots, facilitating, doing the other things, that's a scary, scary team, and it's not going to be an easy out. Dennis Schroeder, you missed that name. You throw in Ferguson, you talked about Grant, and now Markeith Morris for the toughness. Huge. If those guys play to their abilities, then yes, you take them serious because it frustrates me to say all oh, the role players, role players, what is it's Paul George and Russell Westbrook's role to be super, right? Mm -hmm. When they get the max money. So if they're playing like max players and all those other players we're talking about are playing to their role, then you can say, yes, they could go in and win on a game seven in Houston or in Gold State, wherever they have to, or possibly wherever it is, because those two guys are playing at the level that we told them for. He, he looks stress-free, too. He just looked like he's happy where he's at. He's comfortable in the role that he has now where he can be, you know, the alpha 1A some nights, and then he can step down to 1B and let Russell do what he does. And they both just really complement each other extremely well. So I'm happy for Paul George. Excellent decision by him, you know, in free agency. And mm -hmm. uh, it looks ex extremely rewarding. Let's take a look at the Western Conference standings and try to pair these teams up and, and see where they'll be in the first round and also beyond. So for the Rockets, they're in an interesting position. Uh, Half a game Three, four, ahead five, of the Blazers. Yeah. Three, four, and five. Still kind of chasing two with the Nuggets, but the Nuggets playing so well. Seems like there's so like we talked about with the Eastern Conference. I, I don't tough juice. I don't see any of those teams losing four in a row or three in a row because you have to do that to kind of jump a team outside of obviously three and four because they're tied right now. So break under it down one game the point. second round matchups that we could possibly see or to the conference finals. Why it's important where these teams finish. Well, obviously, you want to stay away from the Warriors until, if you're possible, to the Western Conference Finals. But some of those teams like Portland, they don't care right now. Portland's like, we're in. We saw what happened to us last year. We got swept with by New Orleans. So we got to come back like gangbusters and prove last year was a fluke. We're a better team. How about the Thunder and the Rockets? What's the best seed for those two right now, third and fifth out west? I mean, I think the Rockets welcome anyone, you know, with a healthy Chris Paul. I think... OKC welcome anyone, you know, with their two stars being healthy. And you talk about Schroeder and all those guys mm -hmm. that they're they're playing amazing basketball. They're they're able to knock down shots when they're open. They're able to, you know, give those them breaks in those spots, the five to eight minute moments where Russell Westbrook or Paul George need them to be the best possible version of itself. So, and then you look at. The, the Portland Trailblazers, that's not going to be easy out. You got two guys that's so dynamic. They can go out there and score 30 apiece in that backcourt. And let me not forget, the way the Utah Jazz are playing on mm -hmm. the defensive end of the floor, offensively, you know, Donovan Mitchell has just been electric. And then the Denver Nuggets, like I said, I mentioned, they just young enough not to know any better where they can shock a lot of people. Yeah, the Jazz hosting the Nets tonight. Donovan Mitchell, like you said, since January has been one of the most elite guards offensively. It's been Had great offensively out. all season. On the block, they say he's yeah. different.